Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel or welcome if you're new here, I'm Christine. And today I finally get to show you my new pajama pattern. So this pattern is called the Mulberry, named after one of my favorite little streets in New York downtown. I love Mulberry Street and all the little cafes and shops and restaurants. Um, so I gave this pattern the name Mulberry. So the Mulberry is a summer pajama set with the short sleeve top as well as the shorts and then a capri pant uh, that also has the same ruffle detail with the piping along the hem. And then the top has the piping detail all around the collar and the front facing. The little pocket also has the ruffle detail and then the ruffle detail along the bottom all the way around to the back as well. But before I dive into more specifics of that pattern, I just want to show you what I'm wearing because I just love, I just literally just finished it. Um, this is made out of a cotton voile that is from Minerva. And I did this smocking, kind of a pseudo smocking detail around the neckline. And then you might have seen this. Uh, this was an old tablecloth in one of my pattern haul videos. And I ended up making these little summer shorts with the pattern along the bottom. I did some pattern matching around the waist as well. These shorts are actually the shorts of the mulberry, just uh, without the ruffle and lengthened just about an inch and a half or so. So, um, so I made these shorts as like an everyday short. And then because this wall was a little bit sheer, I just did a little top underneath um, from my, this is my Lennox, kind of funny, if you lifting up my shirt, um, but this is my Lennox cami pattern. Um, so I did that just so I had a little bit more coverage. Um, yeah, just coverage because it is pretty sheer, but I do love this wall. I'll link it below. Um, and then I had a little bit extra and I squeezed out a pair of sleep shorts. Uh, this is also my Lennox pattern with the tulip hack that I did uh, and the lace detail, really pretty there. So yeah, just wanted to show you that and I paired it with my little fun, kind of, I don't know, watermelon, yellow watermelon. So back to the mulberry pattern, um, I wanted to show you the little capri pant that has also the ruffle detail at the bottom, really super cute. Of course you could leave off the ruffle if you wanted. Um, you could also leave out the piping if you wanted and just do a regular seam there. I love the piping because I think it really kind of creates a line for your eye. And so we have it along the collar and then along, along the hem. I think it's just a really nice detail. It does take a little bit more time, especially if you're making your own piping, which I always do. I think it's worth the extra bit of time for the really nice detailing it adds. So the other detail to show you while we're on the bottoms is the slash front pockets and then a separate waistband that gets attached at the top. The pants are high waisted. So these are gonna fall right at your natural waistline. So I can show you with the ones I have on now. Um, these are falling, like my belly button is right here. So they're, they're really falling, falling right at my natural waistline, which is where I like my pajamas. I really don't like low waisted pajama bottoms. So these are, um, you know, nice and high waisted, in my opinion, super, super, super comfortable. I am going to be making a sew along video, I think next week, walking through the collar and the facing, as well as the finishing uh, at the bottom of the facing where we connect the ruffle. You can see we got a nice clean detail here um, with the top stitching and the buttons. I wouldn't necessarily say that it's tricky necessarily, the front facing part, but because I've made so many of these, I can definitely share the shortcuts and the best practices to get a really professional look. I love the way the ruffle falls on the back. If you know me, you know I love a good ruffle, so this pattern definitely doesn't disappoint. Um, we also have the ruffle detail along the pocket with some piping detail. There's top stitching all the way around just to give it a nice finished look. And then I'll show you inside too. So I did a full facing, um, which allows us to have a really clean finish um, as well as giving you a spot to add a fancy label or two at center back if you'd like. So I'm really thinking about ordering some custom labels so I can label up my, my makes. It's something that I've kind of been missing. Um, so this is the inside. You can see how we kind of finish 
the bottom there. So the other thing I want to show you is to pocket or not to pocket. So I kind of went back and forth. Um, and I wanted to do this one. I may actually go back and add the pocket if I'm being honest. I think without the pocket, it has a very simple kind of classy look, but the, with the pocket, it definitely adds the fun, the playfulness, the, um, the really classic pajama style, um, with the pocket. So let me know below what you think. I, I'm still torn. I may go back and add a pocket on this one. So I made all three of the photo samples out of actually sheets. Um, so they are super, super, super soft. And all of the fit samples I also made out of sheets. So if you have a vintage sheet in your stash or even a new sheet, it doesn't have to be vintage, or you know, keep your eye out at the thrift for an old super soft sheet because this pajama pattern sews up so beautifully in soft sheets. And the other thing you can play with is the colors of piping. So I've used white in all of mine. I guess I'm a little boring. Um, but I kind of felt like white was just a good choice for these, but you can definitely use contrast piping and get some really fun looks. The other thing I want to talk about really quickly are the buttons. So I did a little sneak peek of this one and I asked your opinion on the buttons. I had three different choices and your comments were so helpful. So I wanted to share some of the wisdom I learned from you regarding buttons. So first I ended up going to my fabric store and I found these kind of baby blue buttons that I ended up using. I didn't use the ones from my stash, but the decisions between buttons were between flat buttons like this or I had a couple options that were more of a rounded style. And many of you mentioned in the comments that the rounded style would be not as comfortable for sleeping. So I wanted to pass that along as you shop for buttons for your pajamas. Definitely the flat buttons I think are a really great choice. So this pattern is PDF only at this point and sized two to 20. Uh, it comes in the AO copy shop, like one pager um format as well as the a4 or us letter tiled version and the instructions include the yardage requirements finished garment measurements uh, layout diagrams as well as step-by-step -step instructions that are illustrated but i'm definitely going to be doing a sew along video just walking through the collar and the facing and this this area um, just so you get a really professional finish, you can follow my step-by-step. -step. So hopefully I'm going to have that for next week's video. And you can shop this and all my patterns over at sewingandthecity.com. And thank you so much for watching and for checking out my new pattern. And I'll definitely see you back next week for another video. All right, bye. <laughs>